Sometimes you don't need to climb a mountain, you don't need a massive car, and you don't need utmost exquisite luxury. Sometimes you need a motor that you know will hack a field or two, something you don't mind getting muddy that's practical. And Land Rover has made just that car, the new Discovery Sport. Discovery isn't a single car anymore, it's a whole sub-brand, one of Land Rover's three pillars. Luxury for Range Rovers, Discovery is leisure, and Defender cars are dual purpose, which means something. It's probably Land Rover speak for everyone. The Disco brand is about to be a thing, like the Range Rover. There was once a time when there were only three Land Rover products, the Range Rover, the Discovery, and the Defender. Then the Freelander came along and softened it up a little bit, but then the Range Rover Sport happened, and that was followed by the Evoque. And they worked very, very well. People liked them, so Land Rover split its deck three ways. This is the first of a whole family of Discovery vehicles, and in the fullness of time, there will be a whole host of Defenders as well for the super hardcore. The Discovery Sport is a looker, there's no doubt about that. It's easily identifiable as a Land Rover vehicle, yet not one from the old days. Hell, it makes the big Discovery look positively antiquated, which, considering it's a fairly similar basic car than we've had since 2003, that's not much of a surprise. The Sport is the first official Discovery offshoot, though it does replace the Freelander, which was, really, a softer, smaller, more family and wallet-friendly Land Rover product. Still good off-road, but not as good as the proper cars. The Freelander often felt like a poor relation to the rest of the Land Rover family. Be that fair or not, it did, whereas the Discovery Sport feels a lot more grown up, very well screwed together, everything's big and chunky, and it's got Land Rover's new touchscreen infotainment thing, which is a blessed relief because it's a piece of technology that you feel actually belongs in a car like this. The old one was, frankly, awful. To move the game on a little further, Land Rover will allegedly be slinging a bunch of Ingenium engines under the hood. They're super green and super great, but from launch, well, they're not here. Why? Who knows? If you want one of these before anyone else, you'll have to put up with the tried and tested 2.2 litre diesel found in a variety of Jaguar Land Rover products. You'll get 46 mpg if you're good. Usually at this point in a video, I say, well, what's it actually like to drive? But considering we're in Iceland where there's changeable weather, mostly snow, and I'm on studded tyres, None of that's really going to relate to the real world, well, unless you live in Iceland, of course, but here's what it's like to drive thus far. Here's what I can ascertain. The four-wheel drive system absolutely works. I can vouch for the snow setting uh, on this car because we're in snow and haven't fallen off yet, but that might also be mostly because of the studded tyres. Amazing amounts of grip. The gearbox, we have the nine-speed ZF gearbox, and it is brilliant. You can't really tell when it's changing gear, it just does its thing. But nine ratios, I don't think we've been out of third, because we haven't been going at great speed. First gear is reserved for rock crawling and off-roady things that you would conceivably do with a Discovery Sport. Nine times out of ten, you'll start off in second gear in town. That's smart. And the engine, the 2.2, tried, tested, proven. It's really very good. 0 to 60 with this gearbox takes a little under nine seconds. Its top speed is 117 miles an hour. Inside, you know what? It feels like a very well put together bit of kit. Everything's big and chunky, which means you can use it when you've got gloves on. That's clever thinking. From a company that wants you to use these things in extreme situations, that's quite clever. Everything in here works. You can tell this is a product designed with stuff like this in mind. Because it's taken everything we've thrown at it. If the car could drive itself, it probably would, and it would be a thousand times better than I am at off-roading. It's just, you just throw these things at anything and they'll do it. I mean, this won't go, say, as far as a Range Rover, like the full fat big boy, or a Defender. But it's still pretty chuffing good. And this has gone through several feet of snow and just shrugged it off and gone, yeah, what, and this is fine. I, I am a Land Rover. I can do that. And often you look at cars in this segment, cars of this size. So this is up against, what, the Audi Q5, BMW X3, Volvo XC60. You look at them and you think, all right, it's got four-wheel drive 
and it'll do X, Y, Z, and they say it'll climb up a mountain or it'll ford a river, and you think, all right, it might do that. But it never will actually do it. Whereas you look at one of these and you think, all right, Land Rover says it can do that. I actually believe it will. And maybe some of the people that buy these things will use it for that. 99% of these will be seen in the Waitrose car park. I can almost guarantee it. But if there's a blizzard on the way to Waitrose, who's going to get there? The Q5 or the Discovery Sport? In the UK, at least, it's five plus two seating. You can seat two in the boots if you need to. I think it's optional elsewhere in the world, but it feels really large. And if you look at it from certain angles, you see it's, it's quite rear heavy. It's quite a long car. It's more station wagon-y than SUV-ish, I suppose, for our American friends. Shortly before we came out here to drive this, Land Rover managed to achieve a five-star Euro NCAP racing. Not only that, but I'm told by a Land Rover source that this is the safest of all of the cars in its class, including a Volvo. So the Freelander's gone, and now the name on the nose of your chosen Landy means that you're into luxury, leisure, or um, dual purpose. And this is the first new car to enter the leisure side of things. It's also quite a big deal. Because where there's a sport, others will follow. I don't know where there'll be room for another discovery, but I'll place good money that there will be one. And there'll be a handful of defenders as well. Basically, Land Rover will be able to provide you with a product at any price point that suits you that will go as off-road as you want it to. Here's a thought though. Owning a Land Rover product, in the UK at least, has always been something of a point of pride. Will filling every conceivable SUV niche take any of that away? Jaguar Land Rover is doing very well. More and more people want the fruits of its labour, but is aggressive expansion going to create more demand or cheapen the rest? I'll leave that to you to decide. So then, this is the start of the Discovery Revolution. The new Discovery Sport, where it's, it looks good, it drives well, I really like it. I have a sneaking suspicion these are going to sell well all over the world.